diversity and inclusion agenda and transform that into a movement? And how do we lift it so that the secret ingredient is about respect, regard, and dignity? That's why there's nothing more befitting than for us to be here today at the UN. The UN, based in 1945, was to bring people together from around the world so that they could talk about world peace, so that they could talk about improving the quality of life, so they could break down the brick and mortar that separated us and find a common theme that would unite us, that would make us cohesive, and make us rally together. And that's what WDLS is all about. It's about us standing on the line, making it real, and sometimes making it raw. So here's a few stories I want to share with you. This is a story about a five-year-old kid. His mother dressed him up one day, and he was going to his kindergarten. And she had just seen John John Kennedy, Jr., and he was dressed in little blue shorts, a blue blazer, white shirt, blue bow tie, blue knee socks, and black shoes. And she sent this kid to dress the exact same way to kindergarten. And he thought he was the smartest, brightest little kid in the world, and he was going to show everybody he knew his alphabet, he could count to 25, and he could do all these amazing things that most five-year-olds couldn't do at that time. The time was 1962, 63, around there. And off he went to school, and that time they let him out at 11.45 to go home. And there weren't buses in those days, because we didn't believe kids were going to be kidnapped. So that kid was going home, and on the way home, in the schoolyard, there were a number of fourth graders that were there. And they beat the bejesus out of this kid. They called him names that he didn't understand. They kicked him. And he sat there, and he ran home, and he cut that suit up with a vengeance. But he learned relatively young that the world is not kind and it can be sometimes cruel. That labels can sting and can hurt. And that somehow that kid knew he had to find his own voice in a world of uncertainty and in a world that was never going to be the same from that moment on. A number of years later at the age of 35, this same kid now after going through his graduate school was up for a job. And in that position, there was a consultancy group that was brought in to help find the next successor to run this company. And they looked at him and said, this is a shoe in this is going to happen for you. You've overperformed everybody else. You know more than they do specifically about marketing communications. Just go through the following process and you'll end up with this job. The same consultants came back and said, I, I don't believe this, I have to tell you. You didn't get the job. And the guy sat there in disbelief and said, I don't understand, what's this all about? They said, all I can tell you is you're not the right image. Image. We all understand that. That little boy and that man could have been African American, Hispanic, gay. That person could have been Muslim, they could be Catholic. It did not make a difference. What made the difference is that person clearly understood that his journey was not just about a career, it was about breaking down those walls and huffing and puffing and making sure they all fell down and that the glass ceiling shattered. And step by step, as that person gained their own momentum, found their confidence, and found their voice, they turned into the man that you see today. Right. So I sit here and I say, completely exposed and wrong. We are in this together. This is about celebrating diversity. It's about celebrating the differences that open our eyes beyond our experiences and let us see the world very differently than we've been exposed and we've been taught. It's about walking into a situation without prejudging anyone and letting them be and putting our arms around those differences and making them feel welcome and wanted. It's about changing the world. Martin Luther King had a dream. That dream turned into a movement. Rosa Parks sat on a bus. She didn't utter a word, but she spoke volumes. We need to be able to break down the divisions of diversity, rally around this sense of inclusion, and make sure that people understand what they thought were minority segments have collectively evolved into the new majority. And we only do that when we're united, when our voice is thunderous, and we speak the same language. So I look at WDLS and I say thank you so much for everything that you've done. Our industry has come nowhere near 
what you all, the kind of work that you've done. So my people are here. There's about 15 of them today, and over the next couple of days, we'll be having people coming in and out of sessions, because they all know one thing. Take the best practices and the learnings that everybody else has been doing for 20, 30 years, and come back and let's learn from everything that they've done, so we can make our organization a special organization that anybody, anytime, can walk down the hallway, and see somebody like them in the highest rank and file that says you belong, you can, now do it. So from me to all of you, thank you very much. And let's have a really successful WDLS session.